joining us on this live stream. We are coming to you live from the Institute of Care Life, a company that develops earthquake early warning system. So we are here today to explore exactly how and what does this early warning system work. So just to recap, uh, two nights ago on Monday night, a 6.0 magnitude earthquake has hit Changning um, County in Yipin City. Uh, so that city is a neighboring city of Chengdu City where we are right now. So after the earthquake happened, um, a warning was issued in advance to surrounding areas, including us right here in Chengdu. And this is via various devices such as loudspeakers as well as TV. So this few seconds of warning that people had could actually prompt them to actually find shelter to protect themselves. Um, and the man behind this Institute of Care Life, uh, I'm very pleased to be introducing him as our guest today in this stream, Dr. Wang Twin, the director of Institute of Care Life. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Wang. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so um, I understand that this technology of yours has been used since 2011. Right. So it's been about eight years now. Yes. Um, for someone who perhaps hasn't heard of earthquake early warning system. Could you briefly introduce um, how does this system work? Okay, sure. So earthquake early warning system, which can be called EW system, works like this. So first of all, we have to deploy some sensors to the area that prone to earthquakes. So these sensors will detect the seismic motion uh, around the epicenter, and this data will be sent to the EW center. And the center will analyze the data in real time, and if it, dete if it detects a uh, big earthquake, it will send out the alert signals through the network to cell phone, television, and the special, uh, special speakers. And then the public and the factories can evacuate or take shelters or do the emergency management, and then to save lives and uh, prevent secondary disasters. So this is basically the process. Even though what I have ex explained it takes a few minutes, however, the whole time it takes only a few seconds, say six seconds from here to here. So I was about seconds. to ask that. Yes, okay. Six seconds, right? right? Okay, so this is the epicenter where the yes. earthquake happens, and this is the sensor, right? right? So the sensor okay. would actually, the sensor is actually positioned um, near the epicenter, where are these actually sensors positioned um, yeah, yeah, in China? Because we don't know prior to the earthquake where will be the epicenter location. So we will deploy the sensors around okay. the uh, whole area that will have the earthquake. Okay, so sensors, they get the, uh, the waves, the magnetic waves, right? No, from no, the seismic waves. Ah, the seismic waves. Right. So it uh, send out this, uh, electric magnetic wave to the epicenter. Okay, and the reason why, say, people like for us in Chengdu, we could actually receive this early warning is because, um, I think you mentioned this before, that these radio waves actually transmit faster right. than the seismic waves. Much faster than the seismic wave. For example, when the seismic wave propagates around, around the epicenter, it has a speed of a few kilometers per second. However, when it becomes a radio wave, it transmits at the speed of three times 10 to the eight kilometers per second. So very, very fast. Okay. okay. And so where, where are these positioned? Th these are in some um, IDC center. Doesn't matter anyway. So uh, when the seismic propagates are around the epicenter, uh, away, away, away from the center, so the signals has go to the cell phone or television or in the loudspeakers and so on for this particular case. Then the receivers get the alert first, and then the seismic wave comes. That gives you the alert. The extra. Yeah, right. Extra time for the evacuation or for or take, take so what, what devices are available right now? So right now in China, or rather yes. in Chengdu, yes. so you mentioned TV, uh, TV and then loudspeakers, cell, cell phones. Loudspeakers and uh, some special receivers, for example, for the uh, elevators, for example. It can automatically f make the elevators to in the right position uh, to prevent the people will be uh, shut in the e elevators. What's the coverage rate so far, based on all these, the, pr the process that you've, you've taken me through, um, what is key in it's actually uh, making this system, say, uh, like a good and efficient, okay. effective system? Is it a coverage rate? A coverage rate, yes, it is very important. So the, the, there are two kinds of coverage rate. First of all, the coverage rate of the 
sensors, how much area was the system covered? The so this one over here, where yeah. it's in uh, earthquake prone areas, right? right? So how many area? So right now it cover, it has 5,700 sensors in, the, in whole China. It covers 2.2 million square kilometers. This one. The second coverage is the uh, number of users that has been covered. So the population. So this one is not as large as that, but it expands. So, but basically, uh, most of the, so, okay, right. So number of users, the second one, and the first one is the number of sensors so around. The, another key, key parameter is the reliability of the system. So you, when they, so it says the, whether there is a, a force alert, for example, this is very important. So, so far for the last seven, uh, eight years, since the beginning of the earthquake early warning system begin, uh, begin to run, there has no force alert yet. So your, this is, we're talking about your system, yes, right? Uh, your system. system. Yes. Uh, you mean it has never experienced any false alarm? Yes, not yet. But uh, of course, we are, uh, we ha the, the system has the probability to have the force alert anyway. So maybe it ha can happen today or tomorrow. But if, since during the last eight years, there was no force alert, we would expect that during the next eight years, there would be no false alert. But we hope, we hope. But is it true, I mean, from a um, you know, testing standpoint, right? Yes. Like a trial and error per yes. se, is it important to have false alarm, then you would perhaps learn and tweak? Yeah, that's right. right. But of course, before the formal operation of the system, we did have some test and trial. Before During that, the trial, you did have some false? Before the formal operation of the system, how, and that before 2011? No, still in 2011, but before September of that year. Before se September of that year, we did have some test and trial and even force alert. But after the 9th and s September of that year, we had no force alert so far. Right. So all the um, early warning that people received, so I mean, so far you mentioned, yes. right, since your system was in use, it was truly because an earthquake has happened. Yes. For example, exactly, yes. Okay. So let's talk a bit about now, right now, over here that we are seeing but in the terms of. Thing that I would add before we move on. Okay. So the another parameter that is very also very important is the response response time of the system. So the faster the better, because then the early warning time will have uh, will be larger. So since for the last earthquake, it has 61 seconds for Chengdu. Of course, for if we have say to 58 it will be bad worse that sure. not as good as yeah, the, the the longer the better anyway yeah so for the early warning time the longer the better for the response time the yes. lesser and the, the update okay yeah. so we for these two parameters the rate of force alert we have the lowest and the, the response time we have the fastest in the world anyway so the response time, I just want to get our audience to, um, for me who has not heard of this system before, the response time you're talking is essentially from here to here, yes, that's right? right? Yes. Yeah, so this is different from the um, early, early warning, warning time. time. Early warning time meaning to say that, say I as a, uh, you know, a resident in Chengdu, yes. um, from the moment I hear the sirens, the, the loudspeakers, yes. until the earthquake actually happening, the buffer time that I have, yes, that exactly. is actually the um, early warning time. Yes. So how is it that China, as you mentioned, mentioned response time, that means from the earthquake happening all the way till being transmitted out, uh, 6.1 seconds. 6.2 seconds. Two seconds. Yes. How is it that um, China is, um, has made such great strides in this part, considering I think that I think China, I mean, for your company, it has only you know started developing yes. this a few years ago. Right. There are many reasons. First of all, I think we had uh, we learned many technologies from other countries, including Japan, American, and Mexico, and so on, and even in also included some preliminary technology of CEA, China Earthquake Administration, because they started this kind of research before us. Then we know that it w what it could be improved, and then we know what to, what to do to improve, and, th and that's part one. Part two, our institute actually has a combined uh, expertise uh, from physics, mechanics, uh, computers, yes. uh, and so on. Yeah. So we can do a lot beyond the traditional seismologist, right. because in many other countries, there are many other groups in the country and in the world, yeah. they. The 
people that are doing the, the research on the early warning system are focused in, on the seismology. But we are going beyond that. I see. So it's a more uh, like a comprehensive, all-rounded right. uh, uh, exactly. part. Because um, the EW system does require comprehensive technology. What about, say, comparable to other uh, countries like, say, uh, Japan, okay. Mexico? Where does China's technology, or rather your technology, stand in that front? Maybe we can uh, walk and... Yeah, right. And when and then we started only after the Winter earthquake in 2008. That's right. And uh, then... And we start to send out the first EW message in 2011. And then we began to serve the public from that September of that year. And of course, the very preliminary uh, service in that year. And then we get the first television EW system in 2012. Uh, but uh, only f for three countries at that time. So you're saying that China only really started on this early warning system in 20. 11, 11, and then 20. the first television uh, EW system service right. in 2012. Okay, um, I, I would like to maybe just butt in and ask as well, right? Yes. Uh, in terms of right now in China, how many players are there, uh, or rather institutes doing the same thing as you, providing this technology? And two, one is our institute, Institute of Care Life, another one is the China Earthquake Administration. They start earlier than us, but we move, moved faster. Okay, but and we have covered the whole country basically, right. but they have only covered Fujian province. Okay, but they're also like a, another independent institute. No, no, they're no, part no, of like no, the. No, uh, no, there are no other independent uh, institutes that are doing this kind of research because the research on the early warning system for the earthquake is very complicated and a sophisticated okay. system. So okay. not so many people can do this anyway. This is also true in many other countries like Japan and okay. Mexico. Not, not so many companies or institutes can do this. Right. But is it healthy, I mean, for example, to have just one independent institute like yours to have a full coverage? I mean, to... Well, the, the, this is because the reason why we have a full coverage of the whole country is because we work harder. Mm. And we want the public to get it alert as sooner as possible. That's also the goal of my, my life. Because after the winter earthquake, I decided to come back right away to start to do the research on the uh, EW service, a uh, okay. EW system, anyway. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and these are the, some example, uh, sample applications. For okay. Example, even for our uh, EW system has been applied to China Earthquake Administration. So it's, it's not the other, other way around. It's not that they service, serve the public, serve us, but we serve the China Earthquake Administration. You serve the China Earthquake Administration? Yes, have, they, they have restored our uh, receivers in the institute anyway. And we also have some, some, some other national center for, uh, earthquake, uh, for mitigation department. Okay. And also for the Sichuan uh, bureaus as well. You mentioned that your technology, you actually uh, picked up some of the, uh, your perhaps, I mean, I would say maybe uh, expertise yes. uh, from other European countries. Uh, and the American, American and the Japan, right, but from the, uh, from the articles, because there are many publications we can and did yes. that we learned that uh, from the publications anyway. But the developing of your technology itself, right? Is it, do, you part, do, you part independent. do you partner it with any specific other you know, no, government really. bodies perhaps? No, no, no. no. But the, the whole technology is developed by our own institute. Of course, we have collaborators both domestically and internationally. And we have actually supported by many, many people in the government as well. I mean, to how to apply this because the EW system is not only a uh, technology yeah. uh, service, but also uh, social management. Social so, management. Society, society ap uh, application. You have to apply this technology to the so can, can society. You, can you maybe give us an example for your, say, on, your, on my mobile phone? Because yes. maybe for our audience that would be more helpful yes. uh, rather than you know, yes. other sort of devices. On your mobile phone later, maybe you can show Absolutely. us how exactly does it work. Sure. Um, and for the mobile phone service for the EW system, uh, then there are two choices. First, you can download an app or to your cell phone, such that uh, your cell phone will be triggered by the uh, earthquake alert when there is a neighboring earthquake hack occurred, occurs. But this, is, this, is, this way is not as good as the next one. The next one is like this. So we can ask the government to download this app or in include, embed this EW function into the cell phone. 
in any cell phone. Yeah, you mean when I example. when I buy the cell phone from the shop or rather online, it would already have this yeah, inside. That's the way that we ha we are pushing. Okay. We are pushing. Okay. Um, I think Dr. Wang, I would like to ask as well in terms of the uh, advance time, right? Yes, the yeah. warning time. Uh, so when the earthquake happened in Yipin two, two nights ago, yeah. um, I read that for people in Yipin, they had about 10 seconds right. of warning time, yes. whereas people in Chengdu right here, we had about 61 seconds. Right. Um, this 61 seconds that people here in Chengdu had before they could take action, to yes. take shelter, how does it compare to say what's available right now in the market in the world? Is it is it a breakthrough in time? And say it again, sorry. Um, the sixty one seconds that yeah, people okay. in change. Oh, okay. Yeah, is it? I yes, mean, for this um, for the performance of the EW system for this particular earthquake, I think it's normal for the system. It's not a real breakthrough for us. Of course, it's a breakthrough for the public because many so many people. Get the alert. That is the breakthrough. It's not the breakthrough of the of the technology. The technology has broke through several years ago. In say before uh, 2013, this technology is there, but the application with the technology is growing fast. And because as I, well, as I just told you, the television and uh, EW system service be, uh, jump up a lot from last year. I mean. The many user. the users, the, the, the countries that are using the uh, TV uh, EW service, grew dramatically last year. Right. So so many people, uh, so many countries, many countries begin to use this. So it's about the awareness that people have yeah, more about this EW. And the, and the, the, ah, okay. And the, and the signals can be sent to the public. That is quite important. And the growth grows. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. A lot. Yeah. Okay, so the 61 seconds is not exactly a breakthrough because you have actually experienced it the t before. Okay, uh, can you show us exactly what is this about? Yeah. Okay, so there are many screens here then to show how does the system performs and what is the uh, current status of the system. So it's, this screen actually shows you the another example of the early warning system, which actually occurred two years ago for the Jiu Zai Go earthquake. Yeah. yeah, that has a magnitude of 7.0, and for that case, Wenchuan County has about 40, uh, 54 seconds of early warning time. So this How far was Wenchuan from Chujiao? 200, uh, 240 kilometers uh, uh, around that. Audience, I, I 240 forget, kilometers. I forget, I forget the exact number, but around that one. But so it has this kind of countdown for the arrival time, and uh, tell, tell, the, tell the public how much intensity they will experience. So, so firstly is the time they have, secondly yeah. is the intensity yeah. of the quake, and yeah. they received this on the TV? Yeah, on TV, of course, some people, other people also receive this from their cell phone as well, and also some the loudspeakers as well. Okay, so this one is the television in real time um, for the, uh, any channel anyway, but it's, if, if there is a strong earthquake around Chengdu acres now, then there, is a strong, uh, there will be an alert on the screen and they tell you the countdown as well. I see, okay. But you have to subscribe to this service before you can actually it's see free. it on TV. But, but, oh, but this kind of service is done by our institute and the, and the television service company. So anyone can receive it? Anyone can receive okay. it, it's free. And uh, this kind of EW function has to be embedded into the system. Does all the TV have that all now, is, so one TV company has worked with us. Just now, actually, another TV company has, talk, has been talking with us, so they will have this service very soon. Okay. But it has nothing directly to that's do with I, the public, because the yeah. public will get the alert automatically. Okay, that's what I wanted to understand, actually, because for every single household in China with a TV, uh, but this, has, this system has to be embedded inside. Right. But, but not every TV has this system inside yet. Not yet, but it's, it's one company has worked with us. As long as the TV service company works with us, that's, that can be and done. This TV company is a big one, right? Yes, that's right, 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 right. Okay, this, uh, this one is this, uh, shows you the location of the epicenter for the uh, earthquake of the, uh, two, day, uh, two days ago. And uh, this is the epicenter, and this is the, the green dots are actually the sensors. So this is the nearest uh, sensor towards the uh, epicenter, and this sensor actually detects the seismic motion uh, very fast, within two seconds, I think. 
And then the other sensors will pick up the P wave of the seismic, P uh, P wave, the uh, seismic so wave. All these other green spots are the sensors. Are the sensors, and yes. they will pick up from the main one that's near the epicenter. Right, the seismic wave propagates. And then the, the seismic wave will arrive at the sensors, and the sensors will pick up the uh, seismic motion data, right. and then send it to the center, EGW center, through the wireless network. Okay, so what's crucial is maybe not so much the EW center in terms of the quantity, but in terms of the sensors, right? right. You mentioned, firstly, yeah. it's the coverage. That's right. Okay. The coverage, I will show you the coverage of the system. So the red lines are the fault zones, in, and the, you, you can see there are many fault lines in China. Yes. And the green dots are actually the sensors. The basic rule uh, for the coverage is to cover the area with many populations oh, and also with the fault lines. So the total, uh, the total area is 2.2 million square kilometers and uh, covers 90% of the population of the, uh, uh, p for the people prone to earthquake. So your technology covers 2.2 million square kilometers right. as well as 90% of the densely populated yes, earthquake prone areas. Yes, right. But over here it says uh, the red dots, right? The, the red lines rather, it says Jewelians, yeah, that means it's right. not connected. Yeah, rather, yeah. Even, uh, but there is no. So we're but it's not earthquake prone, right, those no. areas? The, this, this one actually means whether the sensor is in operation or not. But it shows oh. all the all, all, all in operation, but the red lines only uh, are the fault lines. Okay. Um, Dr. Wang, okay, right. Um, anything else over here that, um, that is another, interesting, another, perhaps, another, that you would like to show us? Important. The, this is the shake map of the earthquake. So you can see this is the epicenter. Yes. And then you can see that this area has an intensity of 7. And so most of the rescue team will go to this area. Where can you see that it's uh, 7? 7 here. Oh, right. Okay, over there. And then the rescue team, I think most of the rescue team uh, of the government are in, are in this area to save the lives, to still do the, uh, to, to, to find the people that may be in trouble. Okay. So this map is for, you, you have access to this, but... No, this map is made, made, made by us. Right, so you have, yeah, so only you have access. Yes, that's right. And of course we have, because this map, uh, the data comes from these sensors. Oh, this so you have a sensor here yourself in your, yeah, this, this one here? The same one. Okay. Same one. This, this sensor is for both the earthquake early warning system and also for the, uh, for the shake map. So the same sensor has two functions. First of all, for the, uh, for the UW function. And the second function is the shake map function. I think it was the first image that you showed us, right? In terms of the early warning time and the response time. Yes. Right, so it right. comes from the same sensor. Same sensor, right. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then we can see is the actual and uh, some other sensors. Uh, so we're going to show you right now the, it's where all the equipments are, yes, right? The right. sensors yes, and... Yes. Um, so yeah. how many sensors are there right now in the whole of Sichuan province or even in China? How many in are there? Sichuan, there are 1,100 sensors in, China, in Sichuan. And in China, there are 5,700 sensors. 5,700 sensors in China. I give you another number. In Japan, there are in total 1,000 sensors for their early warning system. Uh, but I suppose quantity is one thing, right? The positioning is...
So we are back again. Apologies for the drop in signal just now. So we are now here in um, this room where Dr. Wang will show us some of the, uh, his, um, his company's systems, the sensors rather. Right. And uh, welcome again. And uh, these are the sensors that we ha have deployed to the uh, area. Th these are the s uh, same uh, sensors actually. So in total, there are 5,700 sensors in, in the field. Uh, we have deployed this in several years in, in before 2014, anyway. So each sensor has, uh, can detect the seismic motion and then do some preliminary calculation and then send out the data through the cell phone network or oh. even for some case for the cable network as well. Okay, so these sensors, you mentioned there are over 5,000 across China. Yes, right. um, what is the coverage rate like? Is it 90% like you say? 90% of the uh, uh, dense population area prone to the earthquakes. Via the number of sensors. Yes. Okay, so straight away these sensors would transmit the, the uh, motion data to the EW center yes. and uh, then to do the calculation and then calculate the uh, parameters and then send out to the, the public, for example. Okay. okay. Do you think the number of sensors or rather the coverage um, rate in China uh, is enough right now? Right, right now, I think it's okay because the uh, what is, should be done as soon as possible is to improve the coverage of the users. Okay, it's, so it's now 90% of the popula this populated area has the signals, but the signals are not sent to the public Why not? Uh, enough yet. Why not? Because I think the, and the, this is building up because p before people didn't understand too much of this, this Saying because people didn't know there is an earthquake early warning system, so they began to understand. That's why, for example, this for the last two days, there are so many media coverage, and so this one will, I think, push the application uh, of the users and the number of users up. When a lot. you say number of users, do you mean I mean TV, the and the TV, TV aside, and the cell phone, so and, and the loudspeakers for the for the community and the schools and the and the factories? I think. So in a nutshell, we're talking about say TV. It's already there, right? Yes, so that's right. The uh, technology is already yeah. So there. it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a case of whether people would want to embed the system into right. the TV. Right. Secondly, for mobile phones, it's a case of whether people want to download the apps. And is it? It's not the public. It's Serve to download the app or for the normal public to download the app for the, te uh, for the television. What it should be done is either done by the cell phone companies to download this app into the, into the cell phone directly before it's produced, uh, before it's sent out. Uh, sell out. But if that doesn't happen, I, uh, as a user, I could also you choose can, to download yeah, the yeah, app. But the right? normal people will not do this uh, too much. Okay. Okay, because what is this? Disasters are very less frequent. So people do not, will, will not have this in their memory. Yeah, okay. So what about, you mentioned that it, there are not enough users, right, to okay. actually, so what is the um, user coverage rate right now? So 90% for sensors coverage? I think maybe around 10%, I think. Uh, also many, a lot to, should be done for the user. What is this? These are some other sensors, and these are the other sensors that can also help this uh, EW system to have the additional uh, sensors i think to because as we as long as a uh, uh, school has becomes our user then it will restore this kind of receivers along with these receivers we will have another sensor combined to, uh, so as long as there is another school or community included into the system we have another sensor so in the future the number of users uh, the, the number of sensors will grow Will improve, will increase. So all these are also sensors, they but they're also, yes, but they their are, usage. They do, they do not work independently. They work to complement yes, that right. main sensor over there, the blue yeah, that's one. That's right. That the blue one to yes, okay, yes. Just to, all right. Yes. And, and the, yeah, but uh, this way, mm. and uh, when the EW center send out the alert signals to this kind of the receivers, then these receivers will make the loudspeakers to give the alert to the public. This is EW center. Uh, no, this receiver, receiver. GW Center is in the IDC uh, computer center. It's not here, but this receive the signal from the IDC center, okay. and then give uh, send out the alert. Yeah, send out the alert through these loudspeakers. Okay. There are five in China. Yes, and then two nights ago, it's this kind of loudspeakers that allowed the uh, trigger the 
uh, give the alert to the high tech zone area. I think that that is the case. Right. So uh, just to summarize, right? Yes. So the sensor that are uh, sensors that are positioned across China in earthquake prone areas, yes. over 5,000 of them. So what happened two nights ago was the sensor that was nearest to the epicenter yes. in Yiping County received it. It then actually transmitted to the receiver, right? right? Uh, yes. uh, v through the, through ID, the ID center, yes. uh, and there are five of them in China. And this receiver then transmits into the various devices such as mobile phones, TV, and the loudspeaker. Yes, that's right, exactly. That's how it worked, and it works. Okay. Oh, this looks interesting. What is this? Okay, this is another kind of receivers for, your, for, for example, for the school. Because in this case, the students can watch, can see that the seismic wave is expanding and it comes to the ground. And then it can give you the different colors of alert. Can, can you show us, demonstrate? Um, not now, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, but it also it tells you the magnitude of the earthquake yep. and uh, how much time it, ca it has, for example. Okay, so 6.0 magnitude. Yeah, this is another earthquake anyway. Yep. Uh, and it can give you how much time of early warning time and what is the estimate intensity for here, for example. I see. So this is, uh, what is this called again? And it's uh, the, also a kind of receiver. Receiver. A special receiver for a school, for example, yeah. or, or, or for a factory, also possible. So every school and every factory in earthquake prone areas, or even should, across should China. Should install this one, but not yet. So the coverage is not yet okay. that big. But I suppose you have to monitor this, right? If the, it does not transmit to a loudspeaker where people can receive it, that's people right. will not know that there yes, is... Yes, that's right. Of course, all the sensors and all the receivers are monitored in real time. Okay, okay. to keep, make sure that the whole system is working well. Yes. So monitoring real time is one thing. The other one is to yes, let people right. know, right? Yeah, right okay, right. and this one is... Also, an, a kind of receivers and this kind of receiver also will make the loudspeaker to give the alert to the public in case of the earthquake uh, started. Mm -hmm. okay. And these are also as some other kinds of receivers, it's, it's basically the same. So it can also tell you what is the estimated intensity, magnitude, and arrival time, and so on. Uh, what would you say are your um, technology strengths as well as weaknesses? That means to say, what are, you know, is your technology good at, and uh, what are the limitations? Like what could be improved? Okay, so in the future we can still or improve the reliability of the system so that, say, maybe two years later, we can say during the last 10 years, we had no false alert, for example. This one. Second one is to improve uh, the response speed. So we, we, will, we will try to shorten the response time so that it now it, uh, for, from 6 to 2.0 seconds to 5 seconds or to 4 seconds and so on. Of course, we know the limitation will be 3.5 seconds. But in that case, the system has no blind zone. Okay. There, there is no false alarm. Uh, the, 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 sorry, what is the English? False alarm. No, no false alert, we, of course, we, will, we, we will don't want that. Yeah. We will have the blind zone. So oh, the blind zones. Yeah, that's crucial. Yeah, the blind zone is the area around the epicenter uh, so that it ha the people will have the S wave first and then get the, uh, get the alert uh, later. But if there is no planet zone, then even you, if you are uh, standing at the uh, epicenter, uh, on top of the epicenter, then you will still have the alert first and then the S wave comes. This S wave is the secondary wave of the uh, seismic activity and then it actually is the S wave that causes most of the damage. Right. Okay. I will show you the cell phone. Yes, you will show me the uh, cell phone, so I please stay tuned. One. One. Yes. Okay. He's going to go get a mobile phone to show us, to demonstrate to us how does the mobile app, uh, when it comes to the early warning system, works. But for those um, of you who have just joined us on this live stream, we're coming to you live from the Institute of Care Life, a company that develops uh, earthquake early warning uh, system. So this is, uh, we can... Okay, we uh, can, if you could we, just we, go back to the main page, uh, where, how do uh, we start, like okay. the main page, so... This one, okay. Uh, which one? one? Di Zhen Yuijing, okay. Yes. This is a... Th this is the case for that Changlin earthquake. It tells you the magnitude and the, and the, and the and magnitude is 6.1, and uh, how much time it, ca it has before it so arrives here. 
So uh, this would automatically alert yeah. me. Right? Okay. I don't have to switch on the app. No, no, no. It it's will uh, appear. Fully, fully automatic. Okay. So it also it tells you the magnitude, the location, and the estimated intensity for here, and what is the uh, distance away from the epicenter? Two hundred fifty-one kilometers. Okay. So how far? Um, so two fifty kilometers. Yes, how sir. far can it, uh, the distance sort of reach, say from where the earthquake happened, and where say the early, I mean, warning system. So how far can a distance actually reach? Oh uh, well, if the distance is too far away, say five hundred kilometers away, then there, then there is no necessary for alert the people because the, this yeah. earthquake will not True. give a uh, 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 bad sense for that area. So it depends on the magnitude, actually. For example, the, uh, for the Wenchuan earthquake, for example, of 11 years ago, it, the area, the distance away from the center for, say, 300 kilometers can be damaged. OK. One bar? Yeah. Uh, OK, cool. thank you so much for that. Um, right, so like you said, there are many, many factors. Right. So the, the magnitude and the lo uh, and the directivity of the earthquake from, for example, from Wenchuan to Beichuan, along the other end, yeah, okay. So, but if you are perpendicular to that line, then the distance will be shortened anyway. Okay. Um, okay, so that app, right, but the siren sound only happens after the countdown, right? Yes, that's right. So it doesn't happen, say, once the siren happens, then I get for yeah, example, 60 seconds. You will get the countdown first. And countdown then first, then the siren. So yes, but if you are on top of an earthquake, then probably you will have the siren right away without countdown. Exactly, because uh, like, the like we meant... means the arrival of the S wave. I see, okay. And just to be sure as well, this is uh, a, a, an early warning system. Right. That means to say that an earthquake has already happened. Uh, it's occurring. It's, uh, it's happening. It's, it's happening, and the waves generated by the earthquake is likely to actually arrive at your area. Yeah, it's, it's going to arrive at your area. The, and actually, uh, at the time of the early warning messages sent out, the, the, the earthquake is happening right now, yeah. and the seismic is propagating outwards. And uh, it hasn't arrived at your place. Yeah. Then, in that case, you are. The same thing as earthquake as well? Say it again. You say seismic wave, right? Seismic wave. Is it also earthquake, right? Yes, seismic, uh, yes, yeah, earthquake. It's identical, they're, they're identical anyway. So, seismic, uh, the earthquake wave or seismic wave, they are uh, the same. And actually, if you. So, it's, it's, it's a different technology than predicting because predicting yes. means it hasn't happened. Yes. But for this system that we're talking about, it, it's already happening, right. and it's to alert people, you know, in the surrounding areas, right. uh, you know, given the time that you have, uh, to actually take shelter. Right. right. For the earthquake prediction, it actually means there is a, there probably there would be probably earthquake in the future. It has not occurred. It's not occurring as well. Um, you wanted to show yes, me something, right? right? Yeah. So actually, for the earthquake early warning system, it has four functions for the public. So the first one is to escape from the danger area, and then to take shelters for some uh, area, and then to if the intensity of the earthquake is not as high as uh, of not too large, then it can calm you down, calm down. And then for some other special receivers like the uh, like the say people in the government they may be informed by uh, by this kind of early warning system for in particular for the people in the government far away from the epicenter then they need to be informed so that they can be prepared for the emergency management okay um so when we get the um, the alert right whether it's from the tv from the loudspeaker but yes. for the loudspeaker oh the loudspeaker would also count down right yes, okay right. and our mobile phones does it tell us which color do we belong to? Yes, Say, for example, does, in Chengdu, two yes. nights ago, we would be over here. So, from the, so between the, in, in the sound of the countdown, actually there are two different kinds of, uh, this, there are three kinds of countdown. I will show you, hold on a moment, I will okay. bring that count. Okay, he's going to um, bring back his mobile phone. Um, but yeah, so this is the brief process that we, uh, first introduced in a live stream. I'm just going to get my cameraman to show us here while I hold this. This is the epicenter. Um, and then this is where the sensor is positioned. 
it would then transmit, right? So right. various these different process. This is the um, the EW center. EW center. 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 Yeah, that's right. What does yeah. EW stand for? EW. Oh, yeah, early, early warning, warning center. center. Yes, the network. Network to the device, and from this process to this where your device gets the this, the warning, it's about six seconds. Right. So this is what is known as the res the response time. Yes, right. Response time. Yes. Um, but the e the advanced time that we have, right, yes. in terms of receiving it. Um, the longer the better. That means the longer time you have, the more time you have to actually find shelter. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So I I will show you is the three different kinds of alert, which correspond to this diff uh, three different ways to take shelters. If you have this sound like this. Can you make it louder? Sure. Let me repeat. You pay attention to the DD, which actually means the intensity is larger than 6. Uh, in terms of the magnitude of the larger. Then you need to oh, run, run, run for your life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If it's like this, you, they see the difference? They hear the difference? You, there is the only one D instead of a DD. Okay. Then in this case, you, you will... Okay. So we're going to rerun this for you guys, yes. uh, because maybe the volume wasn't that strong. We can okay. continue. So just stop that for a while. Okay. And can you make it the loudest so that we can... I'll put the okay. mic over here. Okay. Loudest. Okay, yes. so we're going to rerun the um, when one. you hear these sounds. Just like the one. I'm going to... Where's the mic over here? Okay, cool. Mm. Okay, so what you just heard is that DD, DD, yes. what does that mean? That means this seismic wave, the intensity is destructive. So the people has to escape or to be in the emergency, emergen most emergency uh, situation. So the buildings may be distracted. Okay. So the people has to be very, very careful and take, take, take shelters or escape. Okay, so it doesn't, tell, it doesn't show you the color or tell you. I tell but you, it but you, only, you, you can only interpret it yeah, interpret via it. Yeah, the, the types of the sound. Yeah, that's right. From the sound, you can. Of course, we can even in the future you use Does the it color. Tell us in words that how intense is it? Yeah, it tells you the words, the words. In that as well. Okay. Okay, like so that. now the second level. The second level is very strong sense of uh, shaking, but it with a little bit of uh, destructive power. Let, let me show you. Okay. So it's just a countdown after that, but be before that it was. DD and now it's D. So be in between the countdown, there is a DD or D. When there is a DD in, in between, it means very strong shaking, destructive uh, yeah. intensity. And for if it's only a D in between, then it means the strong shaking, however, uh, with not much destructive power okay. for the uh, seismic wave. Okay. So that would be in yeah, P, yeah. P, P, yeah. Yeah. So, to, right. To, uh, still need to pay attention and uh, do do some shattering as well to take cover. To that's take the second. Cover. Yes, in, probably you can do that in your room. However, if it's the strongest alert, then you'd better escape okay. if possible. So again, the, that one is DD in the front, but yeah. it doesn't repeat DD anymore. Right, right. Let now the final one, right? Final one is you have the shaking, but the shaking does not mean the destructive. Okay, uh, let's Let me try. Shita. Okay. There is no DD in between. Or in okay. no Can I hear the second one again? Okay. Okay. So the one D in between is the second level, which is take cover. Right, right. So the first one, if you have the DD, then you have to 
uh, get rid of all the other sentences and uh, now do the emergency uh, steps. Speaking of which as well, we're going to end the stream soon, yep. but final two questions for you, yep. um, Dr. Wang. So firstly would be, um, say, okay, so I as a user, yes. right, as, as, a, as, as a resident, right. after interpreting these different levels of intensity, how should I take cover right. um, if I'm within the inner circle, right, yes. which is means I'm in a dangerous zone, how should I take cover? Well, if you have 10 seconds of early warning time, then what you, if you, and you are in the floor, say very high floor, like 10th floor, 10th floor, or 11th floor, or even 17th floor, then what you can do is to, say, go into the bathroom, or to uh, s s go to an under a table, for example, or in, uh, near your bed, for example, and also, uh, the, the, uh, under the bed, or yes, and or go to the place nearby the uh, supporting um, walls of the building, because usually it's there that it's uh, more safer. What do you mean by supporting so, walls? So, uh, this, this, this is not good. This one yeah, is okay. This one is good because this is a solid wall, solid wall. So how do I take cover? So do I under? Uh, you, you, uh, yes, under. Okay. And uh, you, you'd better hold something. Hold. Okay. okay, so if you are high floor, but if you are in the first or f second or third floor, you may escape from the building. And Where do I escape to? To the open space. Any open space? Oh, any open, of course, you'd better, away from, you'd better be away from the high building anyway. Okay. okay. So uh, if you have, say, 10 seconds, yes. early warning time, yes. before the earthquake happens, I mean, yes. in your area at least, yes. uh, find any concrete tables. Yes, that's right. Right? Yeah. Uh, bed. Uh, broke down of the of the ceilings and the well. Okay, but it has to be concrete, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what about if you have more time? Then you're free to. Yeah. Well, you can step out of the building. That will be more safer than any other sense. Anyway, for example, in the Wen Chuan earthquake case, for, uh, in Wen in Bei Chuan, it has it could have 31 seconds of alone time. For many people that were dead in that case, people actually could escape because it has 31 seconds. So many, we know that, we know that many people die in the first or even se second floor. If they had 31 t seconds of early warning time, they can go away anyway. So it's crucial about this early warning time, right? Yes. Is there a way to prolong this uh, warning time in the future? I mean, is that well, in the pipeline? it can be increased by one or two or three seconds. But if you can, it's in principle, in, in for, from the physics, it cannot be increased more than three seconds anymore. Because the principle of the early warning system makes use of the speed difference between the light and the, and the seismic wave. So this d determines the maximum time of the, of the system, I of see. the early warning time. I see. Okay. okay. Um, speaking of, are we going to end this stream with uh, what's coming up, what's, yes. what's next for you, and perhaps what's next for China's um, early warning system? Because like you mentioned just now, in China right now, there are only two independent institutes, right, yes, that right. does this. So Mr. Wang Tuen and another company that focuses on the Fujian area. Right. So you are the, I would say, the market leader in, uh, for the, sure. And, in this and this business, not being marketing leader or this yeah. industry leader, I think. Yeah. So what's next? I mean, you mentioned about the, the, the weak, the limitations just now, right, about the, um, um, yeah, but what about, what, what are you developing next? Uh, the next one is to first of all to increase the coverage of the users in China. Second one is we have been we have been developing the multi-hazard early warning system, including the landslide, mudslide early warning, or even for the tsunami early warning. The multi-hazardous, including earthquake, and the mud mudslide, mudslide, and the, and the landslide, and the tsunami even and the meteor meteor energy uh, disasters as well. Natural disasters. Yeah, so what we are, we are not doing this alone. We are doing this with our collaborators. Who, who are your collaborators? Say some, some are in Chengdu, or some are in Beijing, and some are in some other uh, cities in China. And all, we are also trying to do this with UNESCO. U UNESCO, okay. okay. So we have been building up a very good relationship with them. They have come here last year and we have visited uh, in some uh, together in some uh, we have met in, uh, together with in some con in some conference for example last month i met the people from unesco and uh, 
uh, I asked there, you know, you. Right? Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. And so we are working this with other people around the world for the multi hazard part. And of course, we wanted to uh, apply this, technolo this technology to many other countries as well. So okay. that to save the lives not only in China, but also worldwide. Okay, but currently it's still in the developing stage. It's not, um, it's, uh, commercial, it's not used yet in the market. It's not commercialized uh, uh, yet. Yes, it's not yet fully uh, useful, but it's on the way. I think very soon because we are, we are not starting from zero, from scratch, because we have been doing this with other uh, uh, institutes. The second part we are trying to do is to uh, develop the technology for earthquake prediction. Yeah. So I will show you one sensor. Okay. Here? Okay. Okay. Right. I just, okay, we can come back here later, but we can just quickly as well okay. just okay. wrap so up. So I will show you one sensor okay. here to show the principle. Uh, so what we have done here. So this sensor is to show you the... Uh, so with this sensor, uh, what we want to do is to first of all to deploy two thousand uh, this kind of sensors to Sichuan and Yunnan. And then what we do is to collect the stress and the energy of the ground, okay. uh, 10 kilometers downstairs, so that we know when we can then, or we hope we can then tell where and uh, what the magnitude to be uh, for the earthquake to occur in the future. So, this is the monitoring, monitoring stations, monitoring right? Monitoring stations for the stress and energy and of the underground. So okay. that we know, we will, uh, we will try to know where to, uh, where the earthquake will occur, and uh, what would be the estimate intensity, uh, magnitude as well. Okay. okay. Are there in, in China besides yourself anyone else? Do you know? I mean, who is also developing this one? Monitoring well, stations. The monitoring station is normal, but it was a, the model, the modeling, and the way to do, I think, were unique. So th this way is to break, to try to have some breakthrough for the earthquake prediction. prediction this, right. of course, is under the scientific research part okay. uh, stage. So what you saw just now is a monitoring station that is different from a sensor. Uh, a sensor would detect, uh, you know, when an earthquake has already happened. Yes. Uh, but for this one itself, it would actually predict um, future, future before an earthquake happens, right? right? And right. you do it. Uh, via actually a certain stress test, like energy. Stress. The stress and energy of the underground, of the fault zones, so that we can tell when the future earthquake will occur in the future. Okay, so two future plans for um, yes. um, uh, Dr. Wang. So firstly is of course the monitoring stations to yep. predict. Yep. And the second one would be a multi-hazardous early, warning, uh, system. early warning system that doesn't, that go beyond earthquakes, right? We're talking right. about landslides, mudslides and stuff. Yes. Uh, I, I saw this and I just wanted to show our audience, okay. um, you know, not just maybe in China, but also across the world, wherever you are, yes. uh, of this concept, of this technology of what's known as an earthquake early warning system. So if you get three seconds, right, yes. in advance, yes. early warning, uh, the casualty rate can yes. be reduced by 14%. Right, that, that's true. So this, of course, is a theoretical research, which was done by CEA, China Earthquake Administration, 17 years ago. And if you have the early warning time of 10 seconds, then the uh, reduce of the clarity will be 39%. And if you have 20 seconds, then the clarity reduce can be as large as 63%. And similar research was also done in Japan. For example, in their case, five seconds can save, could save, save 50% of the population, of the clarity. Of course, yeah. the exact numbers are different. However, the direction are same. So as long as you have more uh, uh, EW time, the system can save more lives. That, exactly. is, that is the same. So it's about the awareness, right? Wherever yeah. you are, yes. um, to in what other device, right? Whether it's TV, loudspeaker. By the way, the loudspeaker, is it across China, everywhere that you can find it, or only in certain areas? No, in many areas, but, but not all the places have used that. I think the number of the loudspeakers uh, used for the EW system is increasing dramatically. Okay, I will hope this can be done in the next two years. Every every school in in China right have this kind because of it's it's not just loudspeakers, right? It's TV, it's mobile phones. So if the more you have, maybe the more alert you would be. Right, right. Um, full coverage for the public. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, five seconds may not mean a lot, but if I can find a table table yes. and hide on a table in five seconds, 
right. my life could be saved. That's right. You, sometimes if one second could be very, very important to save lives anyway. Okay, and I think that brings us to an end. Is there anything else you would like? I think it's fine. Okay, thank you so much to our audience for joining us. Again, we're coming to you from Institute of Care Life uh, in Chengdu City, a company that develops early warning system um, you know, in the event of an earthquake. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Yes, okay.